The Pastor Bill Evans, Chetwin, B.C. I want to welcome you to the service of Chetwin uh, TV Ministries, Christian Ministries, and um, we're, we're glad to help out. Uh, uh, we had this uh, approach made to us that we pastors in the community would do, ta do some taping of messages put on television here. It's a great idea. I know sometimes you're flipping through the channels in the middle of the night, you see Chet TV and there's some preacher up there talking or some other program. We're glad to help out, and so I'm honored to speak today. I'm the pastor at the Fellowship Baptist Church in Chetwin, B.C. And I say that because there's people get Chet TV, and Leo always said that from years back. There's people listening and watching in from all over. Um, my passage today I'm going to be looking at is Psalm 16 in my Bible. It's a wonderful psalm, a psalm of David. The psalms are rich. They bless my heart. Uh, I read them very, very often. And uh, this psalm is is um, about uh, David, and it seems like some of the, somebody's out trying to kill David, and David was always uh, being threatened because of Saul and other enemies like that. But one of the things when you notice the psalm, he does mention the idea that he's in trouble uh, with uh, whatever, but there's little care about that. And if we can go through life facing whatever, we, we hide from COVID, we, we, we fight with cancer, we, we fight with a whole bunch of things and debt and all those things. And, and, and God says, I got it. If you'll give it to me, I'll take care of it. And so this psalm would encourage our hearts to that end. And so uh, uh, I want to just leave it with you today. Three points. God, my, per, my preserver, God, my portion, and God, my provider. Let us consider these thoughts together. It starts off in verse 1. It says, preserve me, O God, for I take refuge in you. Uh, preserve me. Uh, what, what a wonderful thought that preserve is. Uh, he, he's able to call out to God for protection and whatever he has going in life. My phone rings often, stressors of people. Uh, you know, one of the thing, find, things I find interesting with people is I can tell them when to, uh, how to, what they ought to do, but whatever situation they have. If you can't do anything about it, then why worry about it? You, you can stay awake all night and worry, and all it does is it rob you of sleep and give you gray hair. Worrying doesn't change it a lick. Turn to God, and he says to the Lord, David says, God, you're my preserver. Preserve me, O God, because I take refuge in you. Where can we go but to the Lord? He's always available to, for us to go to. He starts off, and the next, the next thing he says uh, in, in verse 2, he says, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. And that's the really important part to make that preservation statement real. It was written by David, the man of God, who knew it had, he had a relationship with the living God. He knew he had a relationship. He believed he had a relationship with the, with the man who, the, the person who made the worlds. And, and he says, you are, you Lord, it's, it's Yahweh, the self-existent God. You are my Lord, he says. You are the master of my life. The problem we struggle so much in life is this. We are on the throne of our lives. We make decisions, yes, no, maybe so. And God says, nah, nah, nah. I want to be the master of your life. And in this psalm, he portrays this. And so then he goes on here. This, David says this. You ready for these thoughts that he says? If you haven't read this psalm or you don't have your Bible, you can look at it. He says, I have no good besides you. What? I have no good besides you, David says. You ever let that thought sink into your head? You have no good except what God gives to you in your grace in your life? Well, no, God, you would be blessed. If I was to come in your family, if I was to come to your church, well, you would, your people would just be so blessed. You have no good to offer God. The other Psalm 66, I think it says, all of my righteousness are as filthy rags. When was the last time you went out on the street and put your arms around an old drunk laying in the gutter, smelling like whatever? Put your arm around him and say, hey, how can I help you, sir? I'll take you home and clean you up. That's what God does with us, who, say, who, who he sees us as. We have no good but what he does for us. But how we get a chance to act like that. Oh, that's hideous. I wouldn't do that. Well, you know, he might have age or he might have something else wrong with him. And I, I wouldn't do that. God says, see, you have no good apart from him. But he does say, the psalmist carries on from this, as for the saints, as for the holy ones who are in the earth, uh, they're the majestic ones in whom is all my delight. And there are people in the world that, that, that love God and, and, and are acknowledged. 
And, and so David takes, instead of focusing on himself, well, I'm this great person, God, that, you know, uh, I'm a great king, and I'm a great warrior, and I killed Goliath, and all full of himself. Oh, don't you just love that, somebody so full of himself? David says, nah, I have no good except from you, God. But I do delight in those other ones you have running around in the world. The other ones running around. And then there's others, and he says, the sorrows of those who have bartered. They've actually bartered, he says, have bartered for another God. Bartered for something else rather than God. Uh, I, I'm too, too lazy to go to church. I'm too tired to go to church today. I, I had to watch the, the, you know, all those videos last night. I had to stay on the hockey game and in the three overtimes. I had to watch that, God. I'm way too tired for church today. And we barter with God a different approach. But we want him to preserve us and protect us. And David says, the sorrows of those who have bartered for another, they're going to, those, the sorrows are going to be multiplied. The way of the transgressor is hard. God says it. And he, God says, I plan to make it that way. If you want to be a current transgressor and thumb your nose at me, i got a plan, he says. I'll make life hard for you. That's my plan. Deal with it. And David says, the sorrows of those who have bartered for another God will be multiplied. I shall not put... Pour out uh, their, I shall not pour out their drink offerings nor their blood offerings, nor will I take the names of their gods in their hands. There's just things that are hardly worth speaking about. You watched what? You don't even have to say the name. God, my preserver. He wants to make a relationship. God is always into relationship, keeping it personal. And David said, the Lord God who made the world is my Lord. And he wants that per, uh, personal relationship. God is your preserver. He gets to be your preserver. We find in um, verse 5, the next thought, God is my portion. And here's the interesting what he words is, the Lord is the portion of my inheritance in my cup. The portion of my inheritance is, what, you know, if somebody dies and leaves you something in your will, have you ever had something left to you? It's wonderful to have. You're, are you deserving of it? Do you earn it? Did you earn it? No, well, you might have been kind to somebody and, and, and cared for somehow, whatever. Uh, took care of grandpa and whatever. Uh, and, and what? And, and had something given you. The Lord is my portion uh, in the land. And so in the Hebrew days, what they did was the, the land was to be divided up into family members. And if you had kids, you, you gave them each a portion. The, the land was measured out. And that's got the idea. And so the Lord is the portion of my inheritance in my cup. And uh, he, he apportions out and gives me what is due. I, I read that in another psalm this morning, uh, 47 verse 4. And he chooses the portion that I get. When we come to the table at supper, you get to choose your own food generally. But if you're raised with seven kids and a, a single mom, as my dad, um, dad was gone and uh, um, never there, mom raising seven kids, yeah, mom portioned out the suppers. This is the idea of God apportioning our inheritance and, and, our, and our cup, our supply of our, our needs, fellowship and food that we need and all those things. He apportions those things out. That's his job, he says. And then he says, the lines have fallen to me in pleasant places. So the lines of inheritance that are measuring out, he says, those fall, when, I, when I got my portion, it was wonderful. And you'll find, my friend, as you come to God and say, God, preserve me. God, be my God. That he, he, he wants to preserve you but he also wants to be your portion. And he wants to help you have a, an idea that uh, he, uh, w what he gives you will be best for you. And so our last thought is this, where he says, it was in Genesis 15, 1, before back my portion, he said to Abraham years ago, I am your shield and exceeding great reward. I don't have to buy lottery tickets. I don't lose my salvation if I buy a lottery ticket. I just don't have to buy him. God says, I'm your shield and exceeding great reward. He'd give me lots more money than what I can win. And uh, then I don't have to deal with the frustration of losing. He says, I'm your shield and exceeding great reward. God is my provider. In verse 7, he says this, I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night season. You know that word mind in the night season? The Hebrew word is kidneys. It's kidneys. And the word kidney in Hebrew is kill you. And if you don't have kidneys, it'll kill you. I've done a few of those funerals over the years. And kidneys fail. And, but he says, my, my kidneys instruct me in the night seasons. God's made us, and, 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 he, and he wants to counsel us. He wants us to, so he, he wants to be our provider. Counsel is really important. There's, there's safety in a multitude of counselors. If you just go by your, on your own thinking, that's called idiot. It's from the word idea, idios, and idiot comes from that. Thinking your own thought and doing your own thing. No counsel is necessary to you. 
Yeah, that's what you are. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind or kidneys instruct me in the night season. So he, he's built me so that I, there's instruction going on if I take heed. He goes on to say, I've set the Lord continually before me. Because he's at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Preserve me. Why? Because God put your hand in the hand of the man who stilled the waters. Put your hand in the man, the hand of the man who crossed the seas. Take a good look at yourself and you'll look at others differently. When you put your hand in the hand of the man, if he's walking beside you, you're preserved. This is your portion. He promises to walk with you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. I've set the Lord continually before me. He's my, at my right hand. I'll not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also dwell securely. Security is a big thing for God. He wants you to know security. He wants you to feel peace in your heart. Security is peace. Peace is security. If you have real peace, if, if you have security, uh, you, you can have peace in your heart. If your security is in the things that you have, you can lose them like that. But as we have a relationship with the Lord, my flesh also will dwell securely. It says, therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My, heart will, my flesh will also dwell securely. And he says, for you will not abandon. Now here's David talking. David's sure. God... You will not allow, you know, abandon my soul to the grave, and nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. That psalm is written later again, in verse 22, when he writes about crucifixion, which was unknown in the day it was written. And he writes all these things. But he says there, the psalmist writes the words that says, you will not allow your Holy One to see to undergo decay. That's a picture of Jesus was going to be resurrected. The last verse says, you will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. The world's idea, the path of life. When you come to the fork in the road, take it. Make your own mind up. Do it. The Lord says, when you come to the fork in the road, I'll direct you. Psalm, Proverbs 3, verse 5 is a great well-known verse. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll make your paths straight or smooth. The path you want to walk. You don't want to walk somewhere where you can twist an ankle on the rocks. You don't want to fall off a curb or whatever. You don't want to be uh, going, tripping over potholes or sticks in the dark. You don't want to be doing that. And he says, I will make your path straight. You will, you will make known to me the path of life. And then in your presence is the fullness of joy. In your presence? See, we can know in our life now that absent from this body, Paul said, is to be present with the Lord. Christians can die with peace in their heart. Why? Because they believe they're going to the presence of the living God, the one who made them, the one who gave his son to die for them. You will make known to me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And then in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. If we learn to trust and ask God to preserve us and be our portion, he gives out what is good for us. Somebody made it this way in regard Romans 8.28. It is impossible for our God to give us anything, if we're his child, to give us anything but good. I trust you can get your head around those thoughts. Read Psalm 16. It's a wonderful psalm. Pick up some of those things. God, my, my preserver, my portion, my provider. Philippians 4.19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. I trust your heart is blessed.